Aloha. Aloha. We, we are, are Team Undefined. Undefined. I'm Joseph Lee. I'm Kendrick Chen. I'm Christy Woodward. And I'm Christy Rindle. Today we will be covering the sensitive data policy of the University of Hawaii. This policy concerns the security and protection of sensitive information, which is Executive Policy 2.214. We will be reviewing sections covering roles and responsibilities in information security, collection of, access to, transmission of, and use of storage and sensitive information. We believe that having University of Hawaii state in the beginning their philosophy, purpose, and definitions of sensitive data is a great start for the policy. Why? Because if a user agrees with their philosophy, purpose, and so on, then the user would feel more comfortable with an institution as large as UH handling such data. Having a philosophy to limit the use and storage of such data is a wise philosophy. This limits the risk to the user and to the university. Furthermore, Later in the policy, a few sections later, the policy defines sensitive data while referencing certain respected educational and health act standards. For instance, the student records that fall under the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act are considered sensitive data. Also, health data that is usually considered sensitive. So knowing that anything falls under the health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act is acceptable. Financial information, social security, dates of birth, the list goes on. These are all data that most people would consider sensitive. The roles and responsibilities in information security are essentially broken down into three categories. Resource stewards, data custodians, and users. The role of the steward is mainly for information processing and data consistent with applicable federal, state, and UH policies, standards, regulations, and laws. Their primary duty is to regulate the use and storage of sensitive information by restricting the use of sensitive information only when it's essential. The role of a stewardess deals more with the regulation rather than the implementation of security, which is interesting and seemingly efficient as they serve as a medium between the technical and social side of security. The data custodians manage the systems where the actual information resides, including but not limited to computers, laptops, and smartphones. They are in charge of implementing and administering controls over the resources according to policies and parameters provided by the information resource stewards. The role of the custodian is more technical and involves the handling of sensitive information and providing systems that provide access to information. All custodians are required to sign the UH General Confidentiality Notice which covers permissions and acknowledgement of what information they are dealing with and the importance of keeping them confidential when necessary. Having a role designated to the technical aspects of security is essential, but also having another role such as the steward serving as a check and balance to ensure that the systems provided by the custodians meet procedures is vital to having a successful security system. Users are defined in this policy as those who are granted access to sensitive information that are typically used to perform professional responsibilities. They are initially, initially briefed and told their responsibilities when dealing with sensitive information and are required to agree with a compliance statement that states that they must follow all procedures, guidelines, and policies associated with the protection of sens sensitive information. If users have questions, they are directed to the information resource steward. Similar to the data custodian, all users are required to sign the UH General Confidentiality Notice. This ensures that all users are aware of the security risk involved in, in dealing with sensitive information. The policy states that sensitive information is only collected and stored when essential to the functions and operations of the institution. Furthermore, an annual report of all information systems containing any personal information is required. This is a great way to protect individuals by limiting the collection and keeping track of such collections granted that those responsible in UH Manoa's case, the chancellors, vice presidents, and their designees, hold up the policy. The policy has a low risk for data breaches as practices are in place to eliminate all unnecessary storage of sensitive information and implementation of appropriate security measures essential to the university operations. When granting access to, the sensitive, to sensitive information, the policy requires permission to do so by a resource steward 
or their designee on a need-to-know basis to limit the risk of a breach while being feasible enough for individuals to complete their tasks. As a well-thought-out pro procedure in is in place to keep the risk of a data breach low, with security levels in mind, access to sensitive information granted to third parties can only be granted by the Resource Board. Again, to control how much, what, and why information is released with the individual's interest in mind. Transmission of sensitive information. This section was really interesting because of its similarity to military standards. The policy that UH has for conf handling confidential paper is similar to that of the Navy. Documents and envelopes containing private information are marked confidential. However, since UH has an open digital network, its policy must differ, which is where it gets tricky. It recommends using encryption through SFTP and HTTPS, but also recommends instant messaging and terminal login. The author of this policy should be given the benefit of the doubt, assuming that terminal login means a secure shell terminal. But not all instant messaging is secure. For instance, AOL Instant Messenger scored one out of seven points on the electric Electronic Frontier Foundation Secure Messaging Scorecard in 2014. While the game has probably changed since 2014, having a simple blanket statement that claims all instant messaging is safe is far from the truth. This standard is supposed to be updated soon. Email is known to be generally insecure, thus the recommendation to use encryption such as PGP and GPG is a good one. Furthermore, minimizing the transmission of sens sensitive data and deleting such emails after transmission is complete are good recommendations. For the use of storage and sensitive information section, Marifos told that sensitive information should be stored only where it is specifically required and in an as few systems as possible. These systems that keep the storage must minimally comply with all basic computer computer security standards, which include up-to-date antivirus protection, secure password control, etc. Automatic logins are not allowed. No one computer must not be logged in and unattended at the same time and must not be used by unauthorized individuals. The sensitive information must be encrypted if not in personal active use. Personal information must not be linked to these sensitive data as it is easy to find this information to connect to the data. Also, paper documents and files must be secured. Although these seem like basic information, I do know that many do not know of these rules, such as the encryption of sensitive information if not in active use. These rules do ensure that sensitive information is kept and maintained, but I hope those who enter the system are taught these rules step by step. Also, I hope there are a list of programs that the new employee of the UH Manoa system would use to perform the tasks needed to add security to all their sensitive information. The custodian takes ownership of the disposal of sensitive data. Disposal methods in the policy cover different media, such as erasable media and unerasable media, as well as paper. The disposal methods meet requirements. Furthermore, these requirements may be met by contracting a professional disposable firm. As long as an independent audit of the company is performed along with an independent certification is done, we find this to be acceptable since it is in accordance with state law. In conclusion, Sensitive data documents requiring confidentiality should be stored in locked areas at all time with access given only to trusted personnel. Transmission of data should be transmitted with encryption, using instant messaging only with caution and encryption. Team Undefined recommends modifying the policy to consider this fact. Also, it may be beneficial to modify the policy to include handling and accidental release of sensitive data. Depending on the contents of sensitive data found in file, Proper action should be taken to notify all of those who are impacted and handle any possible harm that could occur from the leak.
Privacy and confidentiality are highly important and should be treated as such. With the current philosophy and purpose stated in the University of Hawaii's sensitive data policy, this will protect employees that are innocent in the event of an investigation of data logs due to suspicious activities. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.